I was sitting in my room scrolling through Netflix's new release list. I was dying for something new to watch, something that would really get my heart racing. I finally settled on a horror movie that looked promising and settled in for a good scare. Lately, I hadn't been getting enough of a scare from movies. They all seemed so fake and staged, but this one looked different. It was a found footage movie, and I love those because they always feel more real. I was halfway into the movie when I really started getting into it. Suddenly, however, I looked down at my phone and realized that I got a text message. At first, I thought it was my friend, but then I saw that it was from my Netflix account. I needed to reset my password for some reason. I clicked on the link and went through the process of resetting my password. A little note popped up, telling me my reset had been successful. I set my phone down and resumed the movie. But soon, I started to feel uneasy, and I didn't think it was coming from the movie itself. I've watched hundreds of horror movies, from 1930s Dracula, Psycho, The Shining, and Silence of the Lambs, but this felt different. I felt a chill run down my spine. It felt like someone was watching me, but that was obviously crazy since I live alone. I slowly turned my head to the door of my room, half expecting to see a masked killer standing there, but there was nothing. I shook my head and chalked it up to being jumpy from the movie and settled back in, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I sighed to myself, annoyed at how silly I was being. Still, I paused the movie and got up to check all the locks on my doors and windows, even though I knew they were all secure. I tried to tell myself that I was just being a paranoid wuss and decided to finish the movie. The credits were rolling when I heard a noise coming from outside my window. My head turned at the sound and I slowly got up. Those raccoons better not have gotten into my trash again. I swear I was going to call animal control. As I looked out though, I noticed my trash cans were untouched. What caught my eye instead was a strange shadow next to my neighbor's house. I looked at it for a few minutes, trying to figure out what it was. Then I saw it move. It was too big to be a raccoon. I could see the glint of moonlight off of something in its hand, and my heart started pounding in my chest. I was frozen in place, not knowing what to do. Then, it turned and looked directly at me, and I could see the outline of its body. It looked like the outline of a human, but he must have been wearing a mask. I couldn't see his eyes, but I could feel them staring at me through the darkness. I'm just dreaming. I I went to bed, and I must be experiencing some weird lucid dream right now. My head seemed to believe I was in some lucid dream, but my body didn't think so. I stood there, frozen, staring at what seemed to be the man half-hidden in the shadows. The man, or whatever it was, started walking towards my house, and I could see him getting closer and closer. My heart started pounding in my chest, and I could feel the blood rushing through my veins. I kept telling my body to move, to go back to bed, and I'd wake up from this weird dream. The figure was now at my window, and suddenly I could see their face clearly. He wasn't wearing a mask. His face was disfigured, barely recognizable as a human. His eyes were slightly lopsided, and a large chunk of his face looked like it was missing. He was grinning at me, a sick, twisted grin that sent chills down my spine. He raised his hand, and I could see that he was holding some sort of curved knife. It was a sickle something that would be unmistakable to any horror addict. I rushed backward, tripping over the edge of my bed and landing with the thud on the floor. The man at the window just kept grinning at me, his sickle raised in the air. In a sudden panic, I scrambled to my feet and ran to the door of my room, throwing it open and sprinting into the kitchen. Dream or not, I needed to have some sort of weapon. I always hated when people in movies would just run around aimlessly. I yanked open the drawer and grabbed a small, but still useful, kitchen knife. I could hear the man, or whatever it was, scratching at my window. What the heck? What the… I looked around, trying to formulate some sort of plan. I knew I didn't have the upper hand here. There was no way I could fight him. He was twice my size, and from the looks of his face, he knew how to use a weapon. Okay, calm down. Just… just think. What would Elm Street Freddy do in a situation like this? I racked my brain, trying to think of some sort of solution. I didn't have any answers. Suddenly, however, the scratching at the window stopped. I stood still, not even breathing as I waited. Was he gone? 
I felt my heart plummet as I heard the man start to bang on the door. Get it together! Get it together! I kept whispering harshly to myself, trying to force myself to think of something. The thuds grew louder. He must have been kicking at the door now. Suddenly, however, reality hit me. How could I have been so dumb? I needed my phone. I needed to call 911. I got up and ran to my bedroom, desperately trying to reach my phone, just as the door to my apartment burst open. He rushed at me and grabbed my shirt with his blade. I felt the sharp edge slice through my skin, and I cried out in pain. The man lifted me up with one hand and slammed me against the wall. The man just grinned at me, his eyes filled with a sickening hunger. Please, please just let me go! The man didn't say anything. He just kept grinning at me, his knife raised in the air, ready to strike again. I was gonna die. There was no way out of this. No wonder horror movies always depicted the main character as slow and dumb. I was the same way. I had been so stupid for not trying to reach my phone sooner. The man brought his knife down and I closed my eyes, waiting for the end. You think I'd let you die that easily? I didn't hack into your phone for nothing. I slowly opened my eyes and saw the man grinning wickedly, his face barely inches from mine. What, what, what are you talking about? I mean, I would have hacked into your phone for your location and IP address for an easy hunt. The fun has just begun. I saw his hand rise again and brought the hilt of his sickle down toward my face. Then I saw black. I jolted awake, seeing the credits rolling. I groaned. Ugh. I must have fallen asleep. What a dream. I slowly stood up, feeling disoriented. As I walked to the window, however, my heart dropped. The window was covered in scratch marks, as if made by a blade. Hi, Julia. I was thinking if we could hang out later this evening. What? You want to hang out with me? Yeah, why not? I was thinking if we could have dinner together and maybe watch some Netflix and chill. What do you say? I don't know if she got the hint of a booty call or not, but her cheeks turned red. Julia's my next door neighbor. She's not the kind of girl who's used to getting attention from boys. Yeah, okay. I would love to hang out with you. Great. See you then. Around 8, Julia rang my doorbell. I let her in. She was dressed nicely for the first time. Her red sleeveless top with blue stretchy jeans made her look cute, honestly. Come on in. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Most of the boys are jerks to me, but you're not like them. I smiled awkwardly and showed her to the couch. Why don't you take a seat? Her body weight almost dunked the sofa to the ground, but I ignored it. I wanted to keep things slow without making her feel uncomfortable, so I asked. Let's watch something then. What do you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. You decide. I would watch anything you want to watch. I understood she was being nice to me. The idea of watching something scary popped into my mind. It will help us get in the mood, I guess. How about a scary movie? Um, okay. I played the scariest gore movie I could find. We started chomping on the pizza as the Netflix logo played on the screen and the movie started. As the movie began, I noticed Julia's face turning pale. Maybe I selected too much gore. Her eyes twitched and drops of sweat appeared on her forehead as the movie progressed. Fifteen minutes went by. We both kept watching it. At one point, a jump scare came and Julia screamed. <laughs> oh, God! This movie is... is scary! Realizing the time had come for me to make my move, I put my hands around her shoulder and scooted close to her. Hey, it's okay. It's just a movie. With the touch of my hand, she smiled awkwardly. I grabbed her hand and whispered in her ears, You look so beautiful tonight. She ran her hands through her hair. Thanks. I like you too, Arthur. Would you mind if I kissed you? I asked as charmingly as possible. She blushed and nodded her head. I paused the movie and we started making out on the couch. She was a big girl, so at first I had to struggle with the positioning. But then we started kissing. I was enjoying it when suddenly she pushed me away. What was that? I followed her eyes and saw she was staring at the dark, empty living room. What are you talking about? 
I just saw someone standing there. Julia, you must have been mistaken. There's no one in this apartment other than the two of us. But I just saw a tall, dark figure. Believe me! <sighs> this girl is pissing me off now. I tried to be calm and not ruin the chance of getting laid. I caressed her cheek and said in a soft voice, There's no one. Trust me. Maybe watching the scary movie was a bad idea. She looked at me with a confused face and then again looked at the living room. Maybe you're right. I must have spooked myself. Exactly. Now, come here. I'll drive all your fears away. I again went close to her and started kissing her. Five seconds into the act, Julia pushed me again, and this time too hard, making me fall from the couch. What the hell, Julia? I swear, I saw someone walking. I'm telling you, there's... Enough! I'm done with your crap! If you're not up to this, then why did you accept my invitation? You invited me just to get laid? She got up from the couch. I could have handled the matter better, but my mood has been ruined by then. Don't act so naive. You do know why I asked you. I mean, look at yourself. You really think a guy like me will have interest in a girl like you? Screw you, Arthur. You are the worst of all the jerks I've ever met in my life. She gave me a tight slap and left my apartment. I heard her slamming my door loudly. I sat down on the couch. The feeling of dread and disgust clogged my veins. Once I calmed down, I realized what an ass I had been to her. I knew I should apologize. I came out of my bedroom and turned on the lights in the living room. The cold wind was coming from the open window. I forgot to close it. I took a quick scan around the apartment and got sure that there was no one in my apartment. Poor Julia. The movie scared her so badly and then I too made her feel worse. I came out and stopped outside her door. I could hear the sound of things breaking and smashing inside her apartment. Man, I have heard her. I knocked on her door. Julia? Julia, look, I I'm sorry. I know I've been a jerk. Please forgive me. I, I won't make a pass on you for my selfish needs. I promise. Will you please join me for dinner? We can at least be friends, you know? Julia? What are you... A loud thud took place on the other side of the door, and then everything went quiet. I pushed the door and it creaked open. The inside of her apartment was a mess. Everything was ruptured and lying on the floor in pieces. Julia, I am sorry. Please don't be so angry. I kept walking towards her bedroom, expecting to find her fuming on her bed. But the bedroom was empty. She wasn't there. That's when I heard a tap running. I knocked at her bathroom door. Hey, come on, I, I said I'm sorry. Don't cry now, please, Julia. But she didn't open it. I placed my ear on her bathroom door, trying to hear her, but there was no other sound than the water. I twisted the doorknob, and to my surprise, it opened. The bathroom light was blinking like crazy. Julia, is everything... Ah! I found Julia laying in the bathtub. Her eyes were wide open, staring at the vent. Water from the tap flooded the tub. She was dead. A round black mark was surrounding her neck. My head started to throb in pain. Just when the light stopped blinking and the white bathroom wall caught my eye, someone had left a message for me on it. With black, someone had written on the wall, You should have believed her the first time! Oh my god. Does that mean Julia was telling the truth? She did see someone in my room, and while I was standing outside her door apologizing, someone was actually murdering her. I called the cops. The paramedics came and took away her body. The police suspect some psycho killer sneaked into our building. I don't know if they'll be able to catch Julia's killer, but it made me feel miserable that I treated her like crap in the last moments of her life. Julia, I, I hope you can forgive me for being a miserable person, but I promise to help out in this investigation. I'm also going to stay in this building, being ready if the killer ever comes back. I promise if he does, he'll get payback for what he did to you. My name is Alan. I have a channel on YouTube in which I dedicate myself to solve paranormal mysteries. Unlike the other channels, I'm not one of those people who pretend to find a ghost and overact everything that happens. No. 
What I'm really dedicated to is to prove that all of this is a lie and to unmask all these fakers who only deceive people. You can tell me I'm boring, but in fact, a lot of people watched my channel. As soon as there was a new case that became popular, everyone would come to my channel and see how I was doing to disprove it. And to the surprise of everyone who hated me for it, every time I succeeded. Every time, except for one. Only one time. Something so scary, so real, and so aggressive happened that from that day on, I was forced to believe. It all started on Reddit. A post on a horror subreddit warned us that something strange was happening on Netflix. The person who wrote the post said that he knows the creators of a new show on the platform. A show that wasn't good, wasn't promoted, and didn't attract attention. But he knew that its creators were in cults. He also added that the show was cursed and that no one should watch it, because with a specific combination of buttons while watching it, it was going to take us to a hidden film in the show. A film that was cursed. I quickly realized this was not real. It was surely an attempt to promote a small show. Although this user didn't say what the cursed combination was, another Reddit user was quick to share it, although I suspected it was the same one from another account. Quickly, all the YouTube channels started talking about this, saying that several people had disappeared after doing this. It said that no one came back and the few that survived were totally insane, which is totally uncheckable. As you can imagine, my audience expected something from me, and I was going to give it to them. I usually upload my videos very quickly, so the subject matter doesn't go out of style. So, I started immediately. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't choose that time for any special reason, I was just busy earlier. But I knew that time had satanic implications. Without turning around, I searched for the show and started watching it. Before I made the button combination, I watched the show a bit to see what it was about. It was pretty boring, very, very poorly filmed and unoriginal. I understand why they needed to put on this whole circus to get anyone to watch it. Bored with the show, I paused it at the moment the Reddit user indicated and pressed the button combination. I watched for a moment, but nothing happened. It was all a lie. What a surprise. I took advantage of the fact that the show was on hiatus to go to the bathroom for a bit to freshen up. A part of me felt disappointed. Whenever I do any of these things, I always hope that something will happen, but I'm usually disappointed. I went back to the dining room and, to my surprise, something had changed. The show was no longer on pause, and what was on the TV was something familiar. I approached in confusion, and after a few seconds, it hit me. It was my house. The person who was on the TV was not an actor. It was me. What? This can't be. At first, I thought I was being hijacked, but then I realized that didn't even make sense. My TV doesn't have cameras. How were they filming me? The remote controller didn't work, and when I turned off the TV, nothing happened. I unplugged the TV, but it was still on. No, 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 no. What's going on? This, this can't be real. Oh, but it is, Alan. Confused, I looked up to find the source of the voice, and to my surprise, it wasn't just coming from the TV. It was coming from my TV filming. You wanted to prove that this was fake, right? What will you tell your followers now? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was so terrified I wanted to vomit. I ran desperately to the exit door, but to my surprise, it was gone. Instead, there was only a wall, the same wall as the rest of my house. I ran to the windows, but they were gone too. There was no way out. I heard a strange noise in the dining room, so against my better judgment, I checked out the source of the noise. The only thing I can tell you is that I regret having done it. I regret not hiding immediately and having to witness what I witnessed. As I watched TV, I could see how that being who spoke to me, that being who had my face and body, who I only thought was a film of me, was coming out. But this one had changed. It was like a nightmarish version of myself. His face was disfigured, and his huge grin was so big that it made his eyes look like they were domineering. His clothes were torn and full of blood, and half of his face, half of his face looked like it was melted. When he looked at me, pieces began to fall off his face. There was no blood behind them, just flesh, and in some places, bone. Alan, 
This doesn't seem real enough for you. This is impossible. I, I must be dreaming. This, this can't be real. Oh, you still don't believe me? I'll have to pinch your cheeks to make you see that this is not a dream. <laughs> Nervously, I closed my eyes and rubbed them as hard as I could. Was I hallucinating? I opened my eyes again, and to my surprise, there was no one there. <sighs> ah! Now you look more like me! <laughs> Grabbing my face, I ran as far as I could. I reached the kitchen and hid behind the table, knife in hand. Meanwhile, I heard footsteps getting louder and louder behind me. Your face was priceless! Don't you understand how this works yet, Alan? I set the rules here! At that moment, I decided I had to fight. I used my knife and pierced her throat as hard as I could. From it, no blood came out, but a strange black liquid. Suddenly, I heard my front door open. Honey, I came home. I brought a pizza. That was my girlfriend's voice. I ran to the door and she almost dropped the pizza because I hugged her so hard. I can't believe you're here. I thought I was gonna die. She hugged me tighter. Much tighter. Hey, what's wrong? You're hurting me. Honey, you say you're an investigator. And yet you don't notice me coming home at 3 a.m. with a pizza? <laughs> you're so adorable. Let me go. You know, I'd love for you to stay here, but I need you. What do you want? Suddenly, you're more cooperative. But I like it. You know, a lot of people watch your videos. You should make a video of what you're going through. Be honest. Tell everything that happened in detail. Why? Because I want to play with new people. Tell them all the steps you did to get here. But also tell them that for nothing in the world should they ever watch this show. Even beg them not to. <laughs> if you don't, I'll come for you. And your girlfriend. What? It was, it was all a, a dream? Unfortunately, when I went to the bathroom, I realized it wasn't a dream, since I still had the mark on my face. In the following days, I dedicated myself to making this video, and when I uploaded it, it quickly went viral. After a few months, Netflix found out about these rumors and took the show down, so I was able to remove my video without fear of consequences. I never played with the paranormal again, and even though I still do investigations, there are crimes with humans. Regarding the Possess show, it's no longer on Netflix, but many resubbed it, and if you look hard enough, you'll find it along with its instructions. But as someone who almost didn't live to share that experience, I warn you, for nothing in the world should you watch this show. I beg you, just don't do it.